Welcome to part two of impulse and just a quick review. We defined in the previous video, impulse is the net force times the time during some kind of an impact. Now, one of the most important aspects of this kind of impact is that the objects in question change their momentum due to the collision. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this relationship more qualitatively. Qualitatively means looking more at patterns and explaining it in words rather than doing it with numbers and equations. Now, before I do that, let me just remind you, impulse is force times the duration of the impact. Right. And that equals momentum. And both of those um, equations will enable you to calculate this idea of impulse because impulse is equal to change momentum. Note about units, I'm not the greatest at remembering to teach these. So the units of momentum can be kilograms, meters per second, or newton seconds. This is preferable because it's an SI unit, but both are valid. Now, let's talk about this equation. The idea of impulse is great for understanding what's happening in situations and then designing objects to help with that. As you can see here, the impulse is what causes the change of momentum. And so in order to um, lessen this change in momentum or reduce the change of momentum, you can play around with the force and the time. So if you obviously hit this ball harder with a greater force, it's going to change its momentum more, its velocity is going to increase more. But we can also play around with other aspects. If we are going to have a fixed change of momentum, so for example, a car suddenly stopping, right? The change of momentum is pretty fixed, your car is going very fast, and it's going to change suddenly. So that change of momentum will basically be affected by force times time. Now in this situation we can see that the force is massive and it happens very quickly. So what car designers do is they design cars to try and reduce this force. Now how do you do that? Well you can't do anything with the momentum, the momentum is going to be the same regardless of how you design the car. It was going fast before and then it will stop. But what you can do is you can play around with this element. If you can change T, if you can make T bigger, then the force will be less. And in fact that's what cars designers do. They design car crumple zones so that when cars crash they take ages to stop. And you can see here, this is a crumple zone. And look at what, the way it stops is it doesn't suddenly like stop forcing the passengers to continue at a high velocity through the windscreen. What they do is they slowly crumple, extending that time, making this time F much, this time much greater. And so the change in momentum is the same. So the force much must be much smaller. And this is what seat belts do. And in boxing, you might have seen, I wonder why, um, you know, how do people cope, how do boxers cope with such high impact uh, punches? They tend to move with the punch. So in order to extend the time when the punch hits the face, um, the boxer moves with the hand, extending that time and reducing the force of impact, All right? Not a big fan of boxing, to be honest, um, but it seems like um, a very visual example. Same with baseball, cricket, things like that. You go with the ball and it extends that time and so reduces the force of the impact. And so I digress. So let's talk a little bit about um, this equation again and let's relate it to some force time graphs then. Here we have three different situations which show very, very different times of contact. We have impulse of something falling through the water. The collision's taking ages. It's taking place throughout the whole time that the ball is in the water. It's, it's a very, very, very small force. Here we have a soft surface 
and the ball stops very slowly and here we have a ball and it's bouncing back now these kind of interactions these force interactions are very different the interaction here is very quick and sudden here we have very slow and here very long and continuous so it kind of makes this equation that we've been using um not always valid now for ib questions 99 percent of the time you will be able to use them because there is an assumption that the force is acting continuously but when these as you can see in these real life examples the force isn't always applied continuously where's my slide gone right here um so you don't suddenly have a value of force you can see how here because of the soft surface the force will probably build up over time um, this one might be more likely to be continuous so the reality is that force when there's an impulse changes right it builds up and then it's reduced and when that happens you can't really use force times time as a way of calculating impulse you have to use what's called the area under a force time graph and whenever you're working out the area there is a link to high level maths something called integration right so i'm only telling you so that you can make a transdisciplinary link one day when you're sitting in maths and your math teacher talks about integration you can say yay miss castro kind of mentioned that anytime you work out the area of the graph you are literally just taking a pattern a graph pattern and integrating it but for now let's go back to reality let's go back to grade 12 um you think how do we work out the area under this graph well the easiest way to do it is to simplify the shape so we have two you could say two triangles right so the area under this graph could be if we work out base so the base times high 0 0.0 0 0.8 times 170 divided by 2 and that would give us the area of those two triangles it's not ideal this gives us an underestimate so maybe perhaps you could draw um, that line and consider how much of an overestimate sorry this would be a slight like overestimate you've got to um, bear that in mind and maybe do some further calculations to try and work that out so just to compare here we have a ball bouncing the reality of the graph is like this if we use ft we would be using this kind of graph right but the equivalent this would show you a nice equivalence of a constant value so we are going to just to sum up use a force time graph to calculate impulse and you would do that by working out the area under the graph i think you have all the information you need now to try the rest of the assignment questions.